Daisy has that. Anybody else? I feel like these days, it's, well, like I said, I don't remember 10 years ago as much, but it seems as though it's like a lot, either you have a lot of student loans or you have scholarship. So I feel like the pressure does come from maintaining that oh, yes. scholarship. And if you can't maintain the scholarship, a lot of athletes, remember at my old undergrad, a lot of them got, a soccer team got wiped out. They had to bring in a new soccer team and a lot of those people were distressed because they were, they were like, where am I going to go to school? I can't pay for this, you know, this university and all that, so. I definitely agree. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, bigger schools, got to fund it. And loans are nasty. Real. <laughs> yes, they are. I have a couple of them, but you know, it builds your credit, right? <laughs> okay, um, another question I have is, what do you guys think about, I did some research, NCAA order says there's 8 million high school student athletes. 450,000 of those play at the collegiate level, and only a small fraction Plays professionally. All of professional. What do you guys think about that? I think it's kind of crazy because um, we've you know talked about this in class several times because a lot of athletes, I don't want to say they're overconfident, but they just I think are so set on um, set on their future in mm -hmm. sport and. They might switch their major, or they might, you know. I mean, I even experienced it at my school in undergrad, a D1 school. Like they would switch, and then they got hurt, or something mm -hmm. happened, and they're done. And it's like they go into like, who am I? But then they also kind of like don't really have a plan for what's to come next. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah. It's scary to me as as I see those numbers. I didn't know it was that alarming. I I didn't really know. I actually was a part of that 450,000 that actually made it from the 8 million. I wasn't a part of the, the fraction that made it from the 450,000, but I can only imagine the pressure. I mean, I have several friends who are in the NFL and in the NBA, and it's just nonstop pressure, and they, they don't know how to cope with it. They don't know, you know, how to let, how to vent, how to let the pressure from the world and the pressure from their family like, what do you do when everybody's really relying on you? And on a mental level and on a psychological level, I can only imagine how scary that is. And a lot of athletes, you know, tend to use substances to, to as a crutch. So um, it's alarming to me when I see that. And every time I have an opportunity to speak to a, an athlete, I always let them know. Like, I don't want to scare them, you know. Hey, you know. Don't follow your dream, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Nothing like that, but the, the lessons you're learning and the structure you're learning playing sports will take you further in life than any any sport can. Um, another question is, like the athletes and uh, the students or the players, what life skills that they learn playing sports can they use in the real life, or in the real world, or in their family, or at work? What do you guys think? Teamwork. Teamwork? Being able to work with other individuals, and in sports can translate into working with other individuals in your career. And just yes. In life in general, it's good to know how to talk to people and work with them, and not like always butt head. Of course, of course. I like teamwork. That's why I like building things with other team players. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, I think I think they can they learn more skills than what they realize. Mm -hmm. you know, like you take a team, especially now, like you're learning communication maybe with somebody that English is not their first language. You're mm -hmm. learning teamwork. You're learning responsibility, accountability. Um, so like it's not just like the big things that you're learning, but there are certain other things that you practice like practice, commitment, showing up on time. Of course, yes. There's a lot of skills that you learn that you don't really think about, but it definitely applies to a lot of other things in life. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. That's, that's one of the biggest things is just the camaraderie. There's so many different types of people I've met, and, and just through my life, like, I, I've lived in an extremely conservative where I'm like the only minority in the class, and it's like, you know, I can, Articulate and have conversations with pretty much anybody. And just the confidence 
that you have when you're just, you know, you might not be around people who technically look like you. I know in Miami, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy, it's a melting pot here. But in different areas of the country, you know, it's just that confidence that just comes. And especially being an athlete, you know, playing, me playing defense back, you know, there's nobody behind you. If somebody gets behind you, you know, it's over with, it's touchdown. So um, it's just, it's just crazy how, how much good comes from playing an organized sport and how much of the structure you can benefit from in whatever you do in life. Um, just sorry, just tell me when you want me to put that back on. So it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. It's just a backdrop. I mean, I, I can go to my website and, uh, after we finish up. Um, uh, lastly, what do you think are some of the answers to prevent athletes from not playing for their life after sport? We were just at the annual sports psych conference a couple weeks ago in Orlando and they had a pan one of the last panels was um, an NBA coach and former NBA player and a former WNBA player. And I remember one of the things that the coach was talking about was he thinks that, somebody asked the question of like, when should athletes start preparing? And he was like, like the first day, like yeah. <laughs> yes. right away, basically. Yep. Not, not waiting, not like a year into your career, but like day one, start preparing for the end of your career. Yes, definitely. It's like when you get a job, when should you start planning for retirement? <laughs> day one. Or when you get there, I guess. <laughs> so um, I like the I like the aspect of um, you got to take control of your destiny, and you know if you don't, somebody will take somebody will pretty much take control of it for you, and not a lot of people really wake up and just you know all right, what am I really going to do today? Like what am I really passionate about? How am I really going to get better? And the same steps as an athlete, I, already, I got a game plan for this opponent. It's the same way in the real world, in the real life. And that's how I'm extremely motivated on a day-to-day -day basis. I have to outperform my previous self. You know, that's either working out, eating better, spiritually, um, whatever in my life, I have to get better, continue to get better. And that's how I like to really approach my life and just continue to get better. Not really reflect on what I did in the past, how I got here in the past, but continue to get better, continue to really improve on every aspect of my life. Um, that's pretty much I really want to hit on, on a concept of what I, what I really learned from. Um, some of the opportunities I've had as, a, as an author now is a lot of the book conferences I've been to, a lot of people I've really been able to connect with. I, I'm really, really big now with uh, FCA Miami, FCA Broward, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And just the, the young kids and the individuals that are coming up, it's like we have a lot of, I know South Florida has a lot of bright stars that are really on their way of, of you know, really making an impact on the sports world. And just seeing how happy they are and really oblivious they are to really the gauntlet that they're about to get into and really grasping them at a younger age and just, you know, it just brings me so much joy and, and, and so much, you know, happiness to seeing that. And uh, I know you guys are the next teachers and counselors or, you know, of the world and um, the future is very bright, especially down here I see. Uh, it's, 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 it's really a blessing for me to have the opportunities to meet the young people and see what they plan on doing, you know, in their future. So, um, yeah. While I'm doing that and John, why don't you guys think of some questions that you have for Robert about, you know, obviously we know what where you all have come from, but also what our profession is that you're trying to pursue here. What might you want to know from him? Yep. Just um, whenever you talk to younger kids, high school level mm -hmm. or freshmen in college or something like that. Mm -hmm. What would be like? What would you want to say that sticks with them? Like the main idea that you would want to get to them at that young age? Like they think the world's ahead of them. They think they know everything. 
That is very true. So what 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 would your message be to them? Like the thing that you would want them to remember? Well, I want them to remember you like sports, I always view sports as a as a vehicle. You know, it's it's getting me someplace. So I try to find something that's deeper to them. And, you know, if it's something that they're trying to get out of, if they're if they're running for something, they're pursuing something, like what are they really passionate about? Like their their drive. And at a younger age, especially in high school, you know, they, they just want to just live and, you know, just get through it. But if I can grasp to them what are you really truly passionate about? And what do you really want to not necessarily do with your life, but what's that drive like? What's your why, pretty much? You know, are you, are you playing sports because you want to help your family out? Or, you know, why? It's pretty much what's your why, you know? That's what, when I speak to young athletes, I pretty much ask them, what's your why? What are you passionate about? probably pretty impactful because a lot of them I don't think think about that. I've never been given the opportunity to think about that. Right? Yeah, true. They were like, oh, you know, well, I'm passionate about video games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting passionate about video games, but like your family. I know I'm extremely passionate about my family. You know, since I've lived down here, my parents come maybe two or three times a year, and those times they do come, it's, it's, it's awesome, you know. And, you know, having them happy and having them, you know, experiencing things they haven't experienced, it brings a lot of joy to me. Yeah. Have you ever considered talking to a sport psyker about your transition when you were going through it? A sports psyche? Psyker. <laughs> Psychologist, sports psych consultant, whatever you want to call oh. it. <laughs> and you can answer truthfully and honestly. I, I would I would consider it now, right. but at the moment I didn't know where to go. Okay. Like we would like when we go to like practice and we go to the enhancement center, you just it's just not really pushed on you too. You might want to speak to psychiatrists about mm -hmm. this, and it's not like it was taboo. It's just nobody really talked about it, and okay. it was kind of like there was help that was needed for some people, and nobody knew where to go. That's like it's a two-part question. I should have warned you. No. Part of the issue that I feel like we have is people look at us as like, I don't want to go to the brain person. Like, there's such a negative stigma about yeah. like, I'm an athlete. I am a football player. I don't want to sit down in front of somebody and talk about my thoughts and feelings, which isn't actually. I don't want to hear your thoughts and feelings either, right? I want to help you be a better athlete. So, what do you think? How can we get into the forum to help these players? Because we have the skills and we have the knowledge, but it doesn't seem like we can get to you guys. So what do you think as an athlete, how we can kind of weasel our way in there? Um, there has to be some kind of a connection, some kind of a, like a bond that where they trust you and they open up to you. I mean, nobody talks to anybody but they don't trust, you know, or, you know, you, this is what you're, you're good at doing, but like, do I trust you if I, as a confidant, as somebody I, I can reveal secrets to things I'm going through. So um, I would say just building like a, re a friendship, relationship, just it, nothing, you know, going on, you know, and try to impose or, or give, you know, try to tell somebody what to do. Um, my, biggest th my biggest mentors are people I've actually seek them. So uh, just, just being around, just letting them know what you do, like if you ever need help. I am, I'm always here to help, I'm always a question away. And the individuals who, who really need it, usually they'll find it. So uh, if, be there. yeah, pretty much just be there. And, and when you are there, just, I didn't even know who our team psychiatrist was. You know, they were probably there, but they never really was, they wasn't there for like chapel or uh, when we had road games and you know, we had things that the team did, like, you know, we never knew until, you know, you had like maybe a, a serious injury and you might need to speak to, you know, somebody that's like a counselor or psychiatrist, but it really wasn't, a, really wasn't around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's my curious curiosity, like why, why did you take that field instead of maybe staying in the coaching transition? Um, that's a great question. Um, 
coaching, it just, it's just not for me. To be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm a little too competitive.